<laughs> Thank you everybody for coming. Uh, I'm John Becker, I'm the town supervisor. Um, we've got Taylor Botar and um, Alex. Sorry, Alex, 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 I always get a roadblock. Yeah. Alex Hess from Barton LaJudas, which are gonna uh, give you the overview of the proposed project. Um, we conceptualized this project back in uh, 2014, 2015. The project back then was about uh, $12 million, and today the proposed project is $20 million. And there's uh, ARPA money, ARPA money, some infrastructure money out there from the federal government, and we'd like to take advantage of that uh, to finish up the sewers along the lake, and we think we can do it uh, with getting some substantial grant money. So with that, I'll turn it over to these guys, and uh, they'll explain everything. Absolutely. All right, so I hope everyone has a, a handout, a little packet. We'll just run through this. Uh, feel free to ask any questions you have either during or you wait to the end, um, and we'll get we we'll going here. Um, so this, I'll just start off. This is uh, the proposed sewer district area. Everything in yellow is the proposed sewer district. Everything in purple is an existing uh, brick board sewer district. Uh, the brick board goes all the way down to a pump station uh, within the West Sullivan Sewer District uh, that is already also existing. Um, so first we'll, we'll get started in here. The project drivers, what's driving this project and the need uh, along with the lake here. Uh, so there's AG non-compliant septic systems uh, that exist at a lot of the residences uh, within this proposed sewer district. Uh, a lot of those are very small lot sizes and then they were seasonal camps at one point uh, that have now been converted into year-round residences that you know, their septic system just can't handle uh, you know, the, the added flow uh, that a seasonal camp would be able to handle. Uh, also an overburden of a uh, seasonal high groundwater table uh, associated with the lake and any you know, rainfall associated with that as well. Uh, and there's also the potential for a public health risk uh, to the nearby lakeshore residences if the septic system is drained directly into the lake. Uh, and with that, there's also environmental risks uh, to the uh, Oneida Lake or lake water quality. Um, so now moving kind of what I already briefly talked on, the proposed service area. Uh, so this would be an extension of public sewers uh, that already exist along the lake out of Bridgeport uh, and down towards Lakeport. Uh, as you can see here, this is uh, this red line that shoots through the middle of the, the map. Uh, this is an existing sanitary sewer force main, uh, and there will be connections into this from the north side of Route 31, which will all be gravity fed via three main pump stations, and on the south side of Route 31, the grinder pump connections uh, that will connect directly into the uh, force main on Route 31. So in the proposed sewer district area, there's approximately 278 uh, equivalent dwelling units. So those are, that equivalent dwelling unit is equal to uh, one uh, single family household. Uh, if they get parcels that counted as a half an EDU. Uh, and if you have a parcel that had two uh, single family houses on it, that would equate to two uh, EDUs. So moving to the next slide, uh, which says Iowa across the top, uh, which stands for the East Oneida Lake Water Pollution Abatement Program. Uh, so this was for the towns of Sullivan, Lenox, Verona, Vienna, and the village of Sylvan Beach uh, to convey wastewater and treat wastewater um, along the lakeshore uh, as, as part of a, a joint venture. Uh, currently, the treatment is performed at the village of Sylvan Beach wastewater treatment plant. Uh, so I, on this little map on the handout that you have shows our proposed project area and the path that it takes. Uh, along the way via infrastructure that's owned by both the Iowa and from two municipalities along the way uh, for the treatment at the Silver Beach Wastewater Treatment Plant. Uh, so then the next slide, proposed improvements. Uh, so as I mentioned previously, uh, for the area north of New York State Route 31, uh, there will be gravity sewer infrastructure, which includes approximately 17,500 feet of eight inch gravity main, uh, as well as 242 gravity lateral connections to the residences that are along that uh, sewer district area, as well as three main pump stations that would connect via force main into the existing dwellings force main, 
Pump State Route 31. Um, the proposed locations of the pump stations are only preliminary right now. Uh, the exact location and size is to be determined. So, you know, where they're shown on the map within here and up here is not a permanent location. Uh, they're going to be in that general area, uh, but we've not acquired any property for those at, at this time. Uh, moving to, every, to the parcels, uh, south of Route 31, there's 18 parcels south of Route 31 that would have uh, grinder pumps connected for their connection to the force main, uh, which would include uh, around 1,300 feet of low pressure force main. Uh, these grinder pumps, uh, basically, they, they have a, a, a roughly 80 gallon uh, container, basically like a little septic holding tank, uh, and there's a pump in it that grinds the waste. And force and puts into a force main uh, to be conveyed completely downstream. Uh, so at the bottom of your page here, uh, the, the left hand side, uh, there is a picture of a grinder pump uh, assembly that's been installed. This was in the Bridgeport Sewer District. Uh, the only thing that would be visible uh, when it's completely buried would be this, this circular top, which is like a light green color. That'd be the only thing that you'd see uh, as part of the grinder pump. Um, additionally, uh, there would be an uh, good question. Who was responsible for the, the individual ground grinding pumps for the? Yep, I, I saw uh, a couple of slides. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry. that is coming up. Oh. <laughs> okay. um, so additionally, there will be an equalization tank uh, added at the West Sullivan Pump Station equalization site. Uh, there's already one uh, equalization tank at that site. And if you move to the next page, uh, you can kind of see what that looks like. Um, that's the existing. Uh, pump station and equalization tank. A uh, similar tank will be added to that site. There's, so there's two. Uh, that just helps buffer the flow for either during a you know wet weather event or a high usage event uh, of the sanitary sewer system. Is it located down here? Uh, so it's located, yep, just along the, the Route 31, so West Sullivan um, uh, Sewer District area. Just across from Monk's, Monk's uh, Fremet Marina. Oh, yeah, just east of here, not very far away. Okay. Uh, so then moving to our next slide, another proposed improvement slide. Uh, these are example pump stations. Uh, then these are both uh, within the Bridgeport Sewer District. Uh, so the first one here on the left hand side is a pump station that is below grade. Uh, so the only thing that you would see is an emergency generator, some hatches that lead into the ground to a wet well, which is where the waste goes to, uh, and there's pumps within that wet well, and then a valve vault for access to valving uh, along the force main. Uh, you'd also see a control panel, uh, electrical panels at that site. Um, so this really depends on the size of the pump station that is required and whether or not everything can fit within a below grade setup. Uh, and then on the right hand side, there's a pump station set up which has a, it's just like architectural block building uh, with a metal roof. Uh, so this is a little bit larger pump station. This is located behind the Bridgeport Fire Department. Uh, and so this building has a building, emergency generator, uh, you know, fenced in site. Uh, these can be, you know, we can modify to, you know, blend it with the residential area. Uh, so there's a variety of different things that can be done uh, in that scenario. Next, we're moving on to operation and maintenance. So this slide will sort of we'll touch on you know, gravity versus grinder pump and you know, where, where the ownership ends uh, for each of these. Uh, so first we'll start with gravity. Uh, so it's gonna be town ownership from the right of way to the sewer main uh, right now. Uh, so operation and maintenance of the three larger pump stations uh, would be by the, the town of Sullivan. Uh, where they would have a connection to the operation system so they can uh, observe what's happening in these larger pump stations. Uh, also, as part of the project, kind of a little change from what this PowerPoint says, uh, we plan to have, uh, as long as we get enough funding for the project to make it affordable for residents, the one-time connection from the gravity sewer main uh, right away to your household connection from your old septic tank will also be included as part of the project. Uh, so now this is something that's generally maintenance free uh, that we would install it as part of the project, but if there was any issues, the town would uh, you know, take care of that in the future. We would have easements uh, to access uh, that lateral connection to your house. I just want to be clear that one part is funding contingent. We want to get grant money for that, so if we take that connection, they can completely turn key operations to keep the homeowners unhappy if they can't use anything. Um, but if we don't get enough funding to do that, 
that, how we would probably just stop with the sewer infrastructure at the right way line, and then the private property uh, owner would be responsible for making that final connection. It's kind of similar to what typically happens with water systems. I know some are going on right now where that water line stops at the property line and the rest of has to take it from there. So again, we're going to try to do it all through the project, the turnkey, but it is funding contingent. Just want to be very clear about that. Uh, so then, you got a question back there. Well, if, 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 we, if they go gravity, it's going to be the variable of installation from household to household is going to be quite dramatic because she may, may her, her tank may be down 20 feet. Well, she has to go 30 feet out to the road. You got to have a half inch drop, you know, whatever, 20 feet. So she's going to have to dig down 25 feet to get it from her house to the lateral. Right. Every property will be different. Right. It will cost very much more than it would cost me if I'm the owner. In that scenario, so, yes. Okay. Right. Now, in we're in the planning stages. <coughs> we will go through the project cycle, but there will be a formal, you know, detailed design phase. Huh? And during that phase, this is what we did for Bridgeport. We went around and inspected you know, every single house so that we knew the sewer infrastructure that we were tying into. Because obviously. The sewer main that we put at the road has to be able to, uh, you know, the depth you were talking about has to be able to be set up to tie into the private household. So that would be something we would do at a later stage in the project. And this might be a dumb question. Is this, if this connection is made pre septic tank? Correct. No, it just says it comes out of the home, not yes. after the not after the fact. Right. So we cut into reason. it between the house and the septic tank, gotcha. we direct it to the sewer main. All right. And then okay. the septic tank gets mission, which all that really means is pumped out and filled in with some stones so it doesn't collapse. Gotcha. All right. All right, so for the grinder pump, uh, the ownership will be on the town of the from the grinder pump uh, to the sewer main, uh, and the, main, the town would maintain the grinder pumps. Uh, currently, the town maintains over 500 in the Bridgeport Sewer District, so they have a good track record you know, maintaining the, the grinder pumps. Uh, if there's issues with that, the town will replace the pump or troubleshoot as needed. Um, similar to the grid. Question. Um, we have existing people with, with gravity pumps, right? And you have existing people with gravity as well yes. in this area? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, they're, assuming there's a monthly or quarterly fee like one, right? Is that standard whether you have a grinder or whether you're on gravity? No, it's all part, of, all part of the project. The only thing they have is the electric bill. Yeah, so okay, whether you're so on grinder or gravity, it's all part of the project. Yep. yep. They yep. pay the yep. electric service for the Yep, for the grinder pump. Yep. And if it's gravity, they don't pay anything? No, it's all part of the project. And this is existing. Your, your existing. Correct. Right. East, 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 East Sullivan is mostly uh, gravity. West Sullivan is gravity. Uh, Bridgeport, most of that is grinder pumps. And it's all, all part of the project. He'll get to it in a minute, but there is a treatment charge for the, the sewer, which the Silver Beach charges. Right, right, right. But that's all part of the cost. So the homeowner doesn't pay anything? No. No, just the cost just the cost of what it is every year. Whether for the debt service and the treatment charge. Okay, what, what's the average household pay? We're, Next we're, slide. Getting, we're getting oh, to that. Yeah. <laughs> Keep my mouth shut. <laughs> we're oh, getting to that. Did you have any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. Uh, yes. I assume there's a at some point there's a vote on this. Well, we haven't heard any complaining so far, so I'm not well, so sure. Well, um, I mean, some of the, some of the issues you're going through, um, it's indeterminate right now whether or not you'll have the money to connect people, or, or whether they're going to have to come up with the funds to connect themselves. That kind of thing is a critical issue, and it would seem to me that if there is a going to be a vote on this at some point and perhaps there should be um, those kinds of details should be uh, available at that point well we can't put in for any grant funding until we have a district form yeah. we have to form a district first yeah well that so that's where sense. we're at right yeah. now well that makes sense yeah yeah, so it's kind of a catch-22. Like, I'd love to be able to tell you, we no, have this much un money available. Yeah, understand, but obviously the there are probably a lot of people who uh, would say, yeah, this is a great idea, 
But no, it's not such a great idea if I'm going to have to shovel out 5,000 bucks to connect. Well, is there something that like homeowners can do to like assist with you getting that kind of grant money? Like if people wrote like letters saying like yes. this is we need letters of support. Yes. We need letters of support. That's something that they just started doing out of Washington. Okay. grand on a raised bed so like i'm not against sewers as long as i don't have to pay anything else because yeah. <laughs> i'm kind of broke <laughs> I understand. Um, the letter support that you mentioned they actually make a big difference okay. um you know these funding agencies they get One more. Um, you mentioned the uh, basically the stimulus money in here. Okay. I mean, there's a monstrous amount of money sloshing around the system right now. Um, probably a lot of it going to semi worthless projects, frankly. And um, it sure would be nice. If some of that money can start going to actually useful things. I mean, just as an example, I can't believe that Onondaga County and the city of Syracuse are targeting more money toward sewers and water mills. Okay. Instead, they're going to spend their money on an amphitheater, which makes no freaking sense at all. Anyway, hey, I'm sorry, an aquarium. Uh, um, so, luckily we're not in that house. I mean, I, somebody should be making a big push toward trying to, trying to get a hold of stimulus money for this because, you know, a few million dollars could drop the price of the stick dramatically for, for, the, for the homeowner. We can't shop for the money, we can't win for the money unless we have to do it. I have no trying to do it for the other 100%. Everything north of Route 31 is gravity. All of that gravity goes into pump stations, which pump southward to 31. Okay. Okay, so for the grinder pumps as well, uh, they have, like I mentioned, they have around an 8 gallon uh, waste capacity. Uh, in the event that there's a long term power outage, the town does have portable generators and there'll be a receptacle uh, on the control panel for the grinder pump where the town will be able to look into that uh, and pump it down uh, to the grinder pump holding area uh, and take care of that uh, as needed. Uh, so, moving into the user cost analysis. Um, so, as John Becker mentioned previously, uh, the estimate. 
estimated project cost right now is $21 million uh, for the entire project. Um, so this is pre-receiving any grants or any you know, financial assistance from the federal government uh, and from the state. Um, so the estimated user cost, which involves uh, a debt service of $677 that pays the debt for the construction side of the project, uh, town estimated operation and maintenance of $130, and an estimated treatment and transmission cost, which would be from the village of Sylvan Beach, of $325 for an approximate annual cost of $1,130. Uh, so this is based on a uh, target, targeted uh, unit cost basis from uh, one of the main grant programs that we're looking at using, which is USDA Rural Development. Um, so this is based on MHI, uh, which is Median Household Income of the Town of Sullivan. Uh, so that's around 2% of the MHI within the town. Um, so this is a uh, $1,130 per unit cost. Uh, is based on the assumption uh, that it was the page, uh, which is Rural Development Grant. Uh, we have grant, which is from the New York State Environmental Facilities Corporation, uh, which is the funding arm of the state uh, for water and wastewater project, as well as a 38-year uh, subsidized loan from USDA RD. All right, so moving into the potential funding for the project. Uh, and I have one, one question before you go on. Yes. I have a property, and I, cross, I have a property across the street, called the same property. I would consider two units. It's all the same property. It's one unit. Do you have like two different dwellings, like a house and then apartments? Yes, uh, just an apartment, single apartment. An apartment is 0.75 units. So if you have a single family home and uh, an apartment on the same property, it'd be 1.75 units for that property. Okay. So there is an increase, but not a full. Correct. Right. Right. Okay. Vacant property is 0.5. Apartment is typically 0.75 or a mobile home would be 0.75. Single family home is, is one. Okay, thanks. All right, so for potential funding, as I mentioned before, uh, the New York State Water Infrastructure Improvement Act, or WEA, which is administrated through New York State Environmental Facilities Corporation. Uh, this grant is the lesser of either $5 million or 25% of the total project cost, less any other grants that you've received. Uh, next is the New York State Environmental Facilities Clean Water State Revolving Fund, or CWSRF. This is the financing side of uh, New York State EFC, so they offer AAA market rate or subsidized loans for the project. Uh, and as I mentioned previously, this is based on MHI and project score and need um, up for the project. Uh, next is USDA Rural Development, uh, so they offer market rate and subsidized rate uh, loans as well as grant funding for projects. So this is the uh, funding that we are targeting for our financing side of things uh, for a 38 year uh, intermediate loan, uh, which is subsidized. Uh, and as we mentioned previously, you know, the big, the big question is the Infrastructure Investment Act uh, that was passed this previous fall. Uh, currently right now, the state funding agencies are putting that money forward right now uh, as part of you know, current funding cycles. Uh, they have just under uh, $500 million uh, for this year to spend on additional infrastructure improvements. Um, so going to our last slide here, what's next uh, for this project and how do we move forward? What's the plan that path? Uh, so right now we're in the, we call it district formation uh, side of things, which means that we need to form this super district as we had mentioned before, in order to move forward and to apply for any funding for the project. Uh, and with this district formation, we would also have to do a state environmental quality review or seeker uh, to you know, look at the environmental assessment and any impact that it can have on the project, the project can have on the environment. Uh, as well as uh, getting a bond resolution for the project, which basically sets the town up uh, for the project. It sets the project cost. Uh, it says, you know, tells uh, At a certain cost, and it, is, it isn't a bond at, at all, it's just a, a note saying that we plan to take a bond out uh, in the future. For the um, and then looking a little further into the schedule passed this year, uh, as we previously mentioned, we would like to secure funding for this project in the near future. Uh, so within the next year, 2023, uh, that's our, our, our plan along our schedule. 
2024 would be our detailed engineering design. So with that, we would go to each residence uh, that would be looking into the sewer within the sewer district, uh, and we would look at your existing infrastructure and look at you know, where that sewer main would be located, uh, where the laterals would be located, and you know look at elevations uh, to get things moving on there. Uh, and then construction start in 2025 and construction completion in 2026. Um, and with that, I don't know if anyone want to add. Um, and if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to ask now or if you stick around for a while, you can ask uh, any one of us one on one. The uh, below surface uh, pumping stations, how, how many uh, units can they handle? But obviously, you, would, you, know, you wouldn't want an above ground and so there's a limitation on the below ground pumping station? There's really not. Um, you can make them as big as, as you might want to. Uh, one of the reasons why we had the building in Bridgeport was it had uh, some odor control uh, equipment within that, uh, basically like carbon scrubbers that you pulled the air out of the, the head space in the wet well the air uh, and filter that through a carbon filter just to reduce odors. Um, so it really just depends on the situation. Um, you know, for the subsurface, they can be as big as, as you want to make them. Oh. So that would be more aesthetic and pleasing than a pumping station above. It would. I mean, you'd be surprised to see some of these you know, they're utility pump stations, but they look like a little garage for, from a house. You wouldn't even know that it's a utility building. Uh, we can get pretty creative with those. Um, you know, certainly we're in a, a residential area. Um, you know, I'm not gonna be too concerned with odors because it's a gravity system in Bridgeport where we had that. It was coming off the grinder pump system, so it's all closed. Um, and there's hydrogen sulfide that builds up within that closed system. Then it hits that pump station and it just kind of releases. So that was really the driver for that. Uh, my guess is we're going to be able to get away with the subsurface pump stations for these. I just don't want to make right. no promises until we get into that design phase. Uh -huh. if, if they don't, if they don't um, receive the, the funding that they need, how do you to get it from the uh, how, how would they do that work? It would be a private contractor. Bridgeport, there was a list of contractors that people could select. There was a good number, about 15 